with a perfect MMA record of 16 wins and 0 losses and a 100% finish rate, Shavkat the Nomad Rachmanov is the most terrifying prospect in the UFC. Despite his rapid rise in the UFC's welterweight division, MMA fans know very little about his origins and his inspiring life story. The most under the radar guy ever because he's everybody's avoiding him. So in this video, we will take a look at five surprising facts about the silent assassin and reveal which MMA analyst gets the chills at a mere mention of his name. Street Fighter in the Mean Streets of Uzbekistan Born on October 23, 1994, in Shurchi, Uzbekistan to Kazakh parents, Rachmanov had a warrior spirit running through his veins from a very early age. Failing to seek formal education due to his family's financial troubles, Shavkat had to work as a loader, as a kid to help support his loved ones. You can call it a blessing in disguise, if you will, as the hardships that Shavkat faced at a young age seem to have transformed him into a very grounded fighter who floats around like a butterfly but stings like a bee. Float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. Now the sting in Shavkat was evident since his childhood when he used to fight kids in his neighborhood until one of them gave up. Every time his brothers matched him up with someone, Rachmanov was ready to go. And just like now, he used to win more often than not. The only time he'd lose a fight was when he was matched with a bigger and stronger opponent. But even then, he'd give his more experienced foes a run for their money. In his own words, fighting is something that Rachmanov enjoyed immensely as a child, and combat sports gave him a platform to express his ruthless aggression in a controlled manner. Shavkat discovered MMA by accident, or maybe it was just destiny. According to the Kazakh, he was wandering around a local market in Shurchi when he happened to come across a DVD store where he saw posters of Pride and the UFC. And it was love at first sight. Now at the time, MMA legends like Fedor Emelianenko and Mirko Krokop, who also happened to be Shavkat's favorite fighters, were at the peak of their power knocking people out left, right, and center, and that inspired Shavkat to do something similar, or perhaps even better. Sambo, MMA, and Shavkat's toughest fight When Shavkat was 17 years old, he migrated to Kazakhstan in search of greener pastures, and despite some early hiccups, the nomad found his safe haven at a local Sambo training facility. His early days in the gym were tough, since no one would train with a rookie. But as soon as Rachmanov learned to dance to the rhythm of combat sambo, people started paying attention. A master of sport and combat sambo now, Shavkat is loaded with potential and hopes to be as successful in MMA as sambo phenoms like Fedor Emelianenko and Habib Nurmagomedov. However, the Nomad knows that he has a long way to go before he finds a permanent home next to some of the greatest fighters of all time. Rachmanov's rapid rise as a Sambo prodigy saw him transition into MMA at an early age. As an amateur, the uber-talented Kazakh won the World Mixed Martial Arts Association and Asian Championship titles before making his professional debut in 2014. In his first eight mixed martial arts fights, Rachmanov produced five first round and three second round finishes. His seventh MMA fight against Korea's Park Yoon Yong brought the best out of him, however. The fight took place in Hwasun in Korea in August, when temperatures in the land of the morning calm are usually pretty high, which when coupled with a thyroid infection made it tougher for Shavkat to train. Jun Yong's relentless wrestling posed more problems for Shavkat, who had to fight off his back the entire time, until he pulled off a rear naked choke in the second round. <laughs> had he not found the neck of his opponent that day, Shavkat believes that he would have lost. In his 11th professional fight, Shavkat won the M1 Global Welterweight Championship in 2019 and made one successful title defense before making his way to the UFC. 
Habib and Abdulmanap connection. One of the more interesting stories from Shavkat's days in M1 is that he had Habib's father, Abdulmanap Nurmagomedov, in his corner for his debut against Adam Tusrov in 2014. The fight took place in Russia, so it is very likely that Shavkat trained for a few days with the Dagestan's godfather of combat sports. The home crowd are silent. I was just about to say the silence is deafening. Now, with a gigantic figure in his corner, the likelihood of Shavkat losing was close to zero, and he dispatched his opponent in the very first round. A few years later, Rachmanov trained with Habib during a mixed martial arts seminar held in Kazakhstan. The two were then seen sitting next to each other at an MMA event in Kazakhstan just a couple of years ago. While there was some history between Habib, his father, and Shavkat, they haven't trained regularly, something that Rachmanov sort of regrets. Before he joined the likes of Gilbert Burns and Michael Chandler at Sanford MMA in the US, Rachmanov said that he'd love to train regularly with the likes of Habib and Islam Mahachev at the American Kickboxing Academy. Although they haven't had the chance to train together for a while, the mutual respect between the two is remarkable. Habib believes that Rachmanov will get his hands on UFC gold pretty soon. Whereas Rachmanov thinks the Dagestani wrestling ace is one of the greatest fighters of all time. Um, definitely, he would, be, he would easily be called uh, the greatest. Better than Hamzat Chimaev. Another fighter who Habib thinks will win a UFC belt is Hamzat Chimaev, and many fans believe a fight between him and Shavkat Rachmanov, well, it's inevitable. The fact that Shavkat and Hamzat made their UFC debuts during the same time frame and made their mark in a similar fashion has made MMA fans talk about a blockbuster fight between the two. The Chechen Swede is 5 0 in the UFC with an 80% finish rate whereas Rachmanov has finished all of his four opponents and has a 100% career finish rate. Rachmanov has passed all of his tests in the UFC with flying colors, but he believes the best is yet to come. There's also a strong argument that he's better than Hamza Chimaev, but is he really? Well, skill-wise, many believe that Shavkat is a better fighter than Chimaev, but it's too soon to jump to conclusions simply because of the fact that Chimaev has been unstoppable in the UFC, except for a razor-close fight against Gilbert Burns, who is considered one of the best welterweights on the planet. However, there's something about Rachmanov's calm demeanor that gives many people, including Laura Sanko, the chills. Shavkat Rachmanov, mm. that man mm. gives me chills. Now, regardless of who you think is better, it is clear that Rachmanov and Chimaev are seriously talented contenders who are destined to fight for ultimate glory one day. For Rachmanov, the goal is to become a champion, and if he achieves it against Chimaev, that will just be the icing on the cake. However, Shavkat's biggest goal is to put Kazakhstan on the MMA map while carrying forward the legacy of his ancestors. He is a patriot who wants to put his country on the MMA map. Shavkat Rachmanov made history by becoming the first Kazakh to sign with the UFC in 2020, and now he wants to become the first Kazakh to win a UFC title. Following in the footsteps of the great warriors from the past, Shavkat wants to make the most of his iron will and strong character to bring mixed martial arts glory back to his country. And as long as he has that fire burning inside of him, he will continue to chase the belt. Shavkat isn't someone who wears his heart on his sleeve, but his deep love for his country and traditions is represented through his timeout, the traditional Kazakh headgear, which he wears every time he walks out to fight. The headgear is similar to Habib Nurmagomedov's papaka, but also different in many ways. It is made of wolf or fox fur and is a distinctive characteristic of the rich Kazakh culture. Being a true representative of his country's identity and culture, Shavkat knows that he will have to carry himself like a champion, especially because he has the chance to open the UFC's door for his compatriots. So only time will tell whether Rachmanov will be able to reach his goals, but as things stand, 
the Nomad is marching towards his rightful destination. And with that, we have come to the end of our video on the five things that you may not have known about Shavkat Rachmanov. If you liked our video, please subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon so you get notified the next time we upload one. Thanks a ton for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.